In this series of videos on Heathkit amateur radio equipment, we next cover the HM11 reflected power meter and SWR bridge. An SWR bridge or meter measures the standing wave ratio, a measure of how well a transmitter is matched to a transmission line and antenna. An ideal transmission line would have a match of one to one, indicating that all the power is reaching the destination and not reflected. It's a commonly used piece of test equipment, particularly by radio amateurs. Heathkit offered a number of SWR meter kits over the years, starting with the AM2 in 1957. The HM11 was essentially identical to the AM2, but was in a case that matched the style and color of the then current Heathkit amateur radio products. It retailed for $15.95 and was sold from 1962 through 1965 when it was replaced by the HM15. It's a pretty standard design with a meter indicating both SWR and percent reflected power, a control for selecting forward or reflected mode, and a sensitivity adjustment. It worked on the 160 through 6 meter ham radio bands, supported 50 or 75 ohms impedance, and could handle the maximum permitted amateur radio power of 1000 watts. To use it, you connect the unit between your transmitter and transmission line, or transmitter and antenna tuner. Set the function switch to forward, key your transmitter, and adjust the sensitivity control for a full scale reading as indicated by the set mark. Now set the function to reflected, key the transmitter and read the SWR off of the meter. You can see here I'm getting a very low SWR, very close to one to one, indicating no reflected power. If I bypass my antenna tuner, I can see that the SWR does go up a little higher, maybe 1.4 to 1. Inside you can see the circuitry, which is all point-to-point -point wiring. It doesn't have any active circuitry. It's powered by the radio energy from the transmitter and does not need any power source of its own. It uses a 100 microamp meter, which is marked Daystrom Limited. That was the parent company of Heathkit at the time. The previous owner taped a couple of resistors inside. The unit can be wired for 50 or 75 ohm impedance. He wired it for 50 ohms and left the resistors for 75 ohms inside in case they were ever needed. I'm sure this was done back in the early 1960s. I purchased my unit on eBay in 2007 and it was in good working order. A previous owner had marked the rear panel with I and O using white paint to indicate the connections for input and output. I put on printed labels as well. I found a copy of the full manual on the internet. The manual says a power of at least 75 watts on 75 meters, the low band, and 2 or 3 watts on 6 meters, the high band, is needed for full scale deflection. I found that my unit needs about 10 watts on the 40 meter band where I usually operate. I bought this unit because it matches my Heathkit DX60B transmitter, HG10 VFO, and HR10B receiver, so I could assemble a complete vintage ham radio station. I generally use a more modern SWR meter or antenna tuner that has separate meters for forward and reflected power, so I can monitor both my transmitted power and SWR. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Check out my other YouTube videos on vintage Heathkit amateur radio and test equipment.